Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely Sunday morning. So when it comes to farmers being able to fix their own tractor, something you'll hear very often from lobbyists is that if farmers are able to fix their own tractors, they may mess with the emission systems and they may try to fix their own emission systems or have somebody outside the dealer network or outside of John Deere fix their emissions. And this is really, really bad because tractors nowadays come with these complicated emission systems and you can't just let anybody fix them. Now, this is a talking point that actually winds up sticking with legislators. So I want to read a little known piece of regulation here called 1039.125 and I, you give me your thoughts on, on what you think of this. So I'm going to read this and it says, source of parts and repairs. State clearly on the first page of your written maintenance instructions that a repair shop or person of the owner's choosing may maintain, replace, or repair emissions control systems. Your instructions may not require components or service identified by brand, trade, or corporate name. Also, do not directly or indirectly condition your warranty on a requirement that the engine be serviced by your franchise dealers or any other service establishments with which you have a commercial relationship. I repeat, for anybody who is not paying attention, state clearly on the first page of your written maintenance instructions that a repair shop or person of the owner's choosing may maintain, replace, or repair emissions control systems and devices. On the first page, this is something that I believe came out around 2004. So we used to value right to repair so much just 18 years ago, not even 30 or 50 or 70, that it wasn't just that you needed to put in the manual that anybody of the owner's choosing could repair the emission systems. It was required that that be on the first page. And it appears that that requirement has changed around as of 2016. Now the wording is a little bit <clears throat> different on this particular regulation. It will stay state clearly in your written maintenance instructions that are, but it doesn't say first page anymore, but it still says state clearly. And there's a couple of questions that I have here for all of you. The first is, has John Deere been following this for the past two decades, or have they been burying this in their manuals? Is this present in their manuals, if even at all? And thirdly, if this is something that is present in John Deere equipment manuals, then why is it that they will regularly tell lobbyists that you can't have right to repair because then normal people, or dare I say it, some shop that's not authorized by the manufacturer may fix the emission systems in a tractor when it is literally the current law that they would be allowed to do so. I think it's important to bring this up to every single politician in a state where a right to repair bill is being pushed, and that is most certainly what we're doing right now in Missouri and Minnesota. This is material that I forwarded to our lobbyists in those states because that is where we have uh, active work trying to get a right to repair bill passed in the agricultural sense. I think it's important to tell this to anybody involved because this is how you figure out which politicians are on the dole for John Deere and which ones actually care about the farmer. Because when somebody brings up emissions as a concern, and this is the existing law, if they still bring it up as a concern, when this has been on the books for over 16 years, you kind of know who, at that point, um, who they're working for. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm also going to include a shout out to Willie Cade, who made me aware of this piece of regulation yesterday, and who has a channel down below, who, and he's going to be going into this in much more depth and detail than I am going to be going into, because as you can see, I am currently on vacation. So that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And please make sure that every single farmer that shows up to any one of these legislative hearings is familiar with this particular regulation. I'm going to include a link to it down below. This is something that should be read at the beginning of every single right to repair hearing because it directly refutes the primary talking point of every John Deere and every single equipment dealers association lobbyist. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.